mortgage rates holding steady over the last week despite mixed economic signals during the holiday season. Now, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaging 3.68% during the week ending December 5th. This is according to Freddie Mac. Now, this comes as Freddie Mac's chief economist says that home buyer demand continues to grow, rising 8%. Joining us now to talk all things housing is Rogers Healy from the Rogers Healy and Associates Real Estate. And Rogers, when you take a look at this, what's been happening in the housing market recently, what do you make of it? Uh, it's it's pretty standard, right? And, and people tend to freak out this time of year because houses have been on the market longer or there's not as many buyers, but that's the seasonality of it. And, and the fact is, and you just mentioned it, our interest rates are still significantly under 4%, which is very, very positive. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, optimistic about the real estate market, not because I do it as a career, but just because I've, I've studied it for a long time and this is just normally how it goes. Uh, in terms of refinancing, we talk about the, how rates are so low right now. Are we seeing a strong demand for refinancing still at this point? You know, yes and no. Typically, the, the cycle of somebody living in a property before they go to sell is three to five years. Mm -hmm. So right now, what we're going to see, there's going to be a nice intersection with millennials and people in Gen X, which they never seem to talk about, <laughs> wanting to go buy baby boomers properties, which means they, they might want to go and get out of something quicker than they normally would. So, yeah, the refi boom always happens when you have a significant decrease in the rate, but it's not like we saw five or six years ago. Is it, is it a good time to buy right now? It's, it's always a good time to buy, right? And, and I heard this a long time ago, that the definition of a good deal is a deal that makes you feel good. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell somebody that, sometimes they want a deal that's just going to save them money. So historically, the fourth quarter, and really November and December, that is when inventory has been sitting the longest, which means people can get relatively, you know, a quote unquote better deal on the price. So it's a good time to buy and you couple that with low interest rates. Yeah, this is a great time to purchase property in our country. Well, Roger, speaking of inventory, housing inventory fell to a record low 3.9 uh, month supply. It's running out. Why is this the case? Well, I mean, yeah, I'd like to say that it's running out, but then I'd be selling myself out of a job. But, you know, people are gung ho. And no matter what happens, the American dream is always to go and own your own real estate. And I think what's going to continue to happen is people are going to want to go and own a bigger piece of real estate, which is going to give us, you know, that much more security. So, yeah, low, in low, low inventory is great. But what we're going to see happen, too, I think, in the first and second quarter of next year is rent, rent rates have taken a really, really strong increase over the past five or six years, which has given people the inability to go save money. So I think that people are going to be moving more to the outside the urban core with rental properties, which will give them the affordability of ability, you know, in a year's time to go buy something you know, close to where they want to be. So you're not uh, at all concerned about the fact that the affordability issue, which has been keeping a lot of first time home buyers on the sideline, that that won't still be an issue going forward? Yeah, I mean, it's a catch 22. You either go and rent in the coolest area or you save money. You don't live in the coolest area and then you eventually buy in the coolest area. So, it, it, you know, it's got to be user preference. But millennials and we keep talking about them and we always forget about Gen X. I'm 39, right? I'm a Gen X. Millennials are turning 30 this year. There's over 5 million millennials turning 30, and a lot of people want to go and do something with their finances in a property, right? And with that being said, too, we've seen people get married at a later, you know, later ages uh, these days where now, like someone like me, I'd buy a property for my dogs. So the... the um, the, 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 fact, the factors are changing, but it still all revolves around the real estate market in our country, and that's going to always be the heartbeat um, of what's keeping us alive. So overall, what's your outlook for 2020 as we head into the uh, new year? I think it's going to be interesting, and I, I, I'm still very gung-ho, and obviously this is what I do for a living, but I think any election year, people tend to go and sit on the sideline maybe a few steps back. And I think once they go and, and realize everything's going to be okay, no matter who gets elected or reelected, that you know our, our market's going to stabilize again on the real estate side. But low interest rates are going to always drive first-time home buyers, and you know with rental rates increase, and that's going to make our sales cycle that much stronger. All right. Well, we'll leave it there, Rogers Healy. Thank you so much for joining Thanks me. Thanks for having me.